Hi and welcome to Velo GPS. In this quick start guide we're going to show you how to set up your data screens on the Garmin Edge 510 to help you get the most out of it. So first of all we've powered the unit up and from the home page you need to select the settings option which is this little icon down in the bottom right hand side. And then from within settings you choose activity profiles and then you choose the profile that you wish to adjust. So we're going to choose the race profile and then you choose training pages. So once you're into the training pages, you can see that we have up to five different data pages. You'll see here, page number five, as well as some additional pages covering course, workout, map, elevation, and virtual partner. And we're going to show you those in a little bit. But for now, we're just going to show you how to set up page number one. So selecting page number one, you'll see that currently we have six data fields displayed. And you can adjust that up to as many as 10 data fields but we tend to find that that leaves the screen a little bit cluttered and a little bit difficult to view whilst you're cycling so six is about the optimum we find for ourselves so if we reduce it back down to six you'll notice that you get two slightly larger data fields at the top here and then four smaller data fields down the bottom so once you're happy with the number of data fields you're going to display you select the tick option and then to adjust the data fields you literally just touch on the field and it will take you to the data field category screen where you can choose from any number of categories covering cadence, calories, courses, cycling dynamics, distance, etc. And there's a whole range here, but we want to find the speed category because we had speed selected, but we're going to change speed on this occasion to maximum speed. And you'll see that the data field has changed to maximum speed at the top here. And it's exactly the same if you want to change any of the fields here. So the smaller field here at the bottom, distance to next, which is one of the navigational categories. You can change that if you want. And it doesn't have to be navigation. It could be any of these fields here. But we're going to change it instead of distance to next, maybe estimated time of arrival at next. And you can see that that's changed now. So once you're happy with the data that you're displaying, you again select the tick option. And then we can move on and set up any of the additional pages you may want to have here. So page number two, you'll notice that we have turned on. And to turn pages on and off, you just use this little slider at the top here and touch on it. And there we go, we've turned it off and we've turned it back on. So we've got two data fields displayed here. We're good with that. And these are set up at the moment for heart rate graph and heart rate. So there are certain graphical options that you can select from the categories. But something we'll just warn you of is if you try and display some of the graphical options on screens with too many data fields displayed you can just see where we've gone to three data fields with that reduced area there it's just squashed the graph up and it's now um, no longer properly displaying so if we just go back and go back into that page and reduce it back down to a split screen with two data fields you'll notice that that graph is now fully displaying correctly in the screen so we're happy with that and then the third page, again, that we have turned on that we wanted to show you very quickly was something that is new to the Garmin Edge 510. Uh, this particular page we've set up with DI2 information, which gives you a whole load of information about your electronic gearing system if you have that on your bike. So uh, if we just look at the categories here, um, this is new, as I mentioned, on the 510 and the 810. It was previously a feature only on the Garmin Edge 1000, but if you've upgraded to software version 3.50, you'll now find that you have a gears category listed in the data field categories there which if you select have a whole range of things from DI2 battery level, front gear, gear ratio and then we had gears selected at the top here which tells you your front and rear gears. DI2 battery level is quite useful as well just to make sure you never get caught short running out of battery and getting stuck in gear. So that's something that's new on the Garmin Edge 510 uh, in the latest software version so we're happy with that. So moving on, pages 4 and 5 are turned off at the moment. Really, if you want to activate them, uh, if you're a real data junkie, you can do. But you have the option for uh, a course page, a workout page. The map page here um, is for if you have uploaded a course uh, that you've pre-programmed on a mapping tool. Now, whilst the 510 doesn't have... Uh, maps installed you can do very very basic navigation using the courses function which which gives you a breadcrumb trail so it effectively uh, gives you a line displayed on the screen so this is where we would appear and there'd be a line going up and if the line turns to the right it might be because there's a right hand turn approaching but the data fields that we've uh, selected here you can have anywhere up to two displayed so we've got speed and distance to next displayed but you can change that as you can see here uh, using any of the categories that you wish. So if we go back 
Uh, we then have the elevation page, which we've got turned on at the moment. And you'll notice that this is a plot of elevation against distance. So again, if you've uploaded a course with elevation data included, it'll enable you to trace your progress on climbs, on descents, etc. Know what climbs you've got coming up and so forth. But again, you can adjust the data that you have displayed at the bottom or have nothing displayed there and there is an elevation category but you don't have to choose from that you can choose from any of the categories here so I think we had grade selected on that one okay and then we just hit the back arrow to return back to the training pages screen and then finally we have virtual partner so the virtual partner enables you to race against either a previous ride that you've undertaken and the pace that you've set for that or it enables you to ride against a, a virtual partner that you've uploaded from a, a course that you've mapped potentially. So if we now come back out of all of these screens and find our way back to the main menu and select the ride option, you'll just see here this was the page number one that we set up with our six data fields. And a neat little trick that you can use from here, if you don't want to go all the way back through the training pages options there to adjust just one of the fields on the screen or a couple of them, all you have to do is literally just touch and hold until it highlights. There we go. And then when you release, it will take you straight into the data field category screen. So what we had set a minute ago there was maximum speed, where really we want it set back to just plain old speed. So if you go into the speed category, we can reselect speed. And then very quickly, we've been able to change the setup of that one particular parameter. So then in order to move on to pages two and three, you literally just swipe across the screen. So we've done that, and there we have our heart rate information. Another swipe takes us to our DI2 page that we set up. Another swipe takes us to virtual partner. So this is where, we, as we said, you're racing against a virtual partner that you've pre-programmed in. And these two fields at the bottom are preset. You can't adjust these. This is your distance ahead of your virtual partner or your time ahead. Uh, or indeed, if you're uh, struggling somewhat, it may actually read distance behind and time behind. And then a final swipe here should take us to our elevation page. And because we're not uh, running a course at the moment, you can't see the graph there. But if we had a course loaded, it'd show you a graphical representation of the elevation over the length of that particular ride. And again, just to demonstrate, you can also do the tap and hold feature here to adjust the data that you've got displayed in any of the fields at the bottom. So finally taking a swipe across the page, we're back to our page number one. And that in about a few minutes. Uh, is very quickly how to set up the data pages on your Garmin Edge 510.